Hi everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping and in this video I will teach you how to create memorized rent invoices for the whole term of a lease. All right, let's get started. Okay, everybody, I'm going to teach you how to plan out your rent increases for the term of a lease. So we're going to keep this really simple. Um, we're going to say you got a three-year lease. I know they usually go five and up, but maybe this could be residential. Um, and this is for the purpose of invoicing the tenants, whether it's, you could use this for residential or commercial. All right. So we're saying the first year, year one, $2,000. And then year two, a 3% increase, year three, another 3%. So we've kind of got it planned out here. Now let's talk about the best way to do this. First off, we should have, before we start, we need to create items for the invoice, right? The item that goes on your invoice, it needs to be very specific because it's going to repeat the invoice. And if the item doesn't, isn't connected with an exact price, we have an issue. The other thing is the item needs to be specific regarding price. And it also unit, because I'm a big believer in build that chart of accounts the right way so that you can run a beautiful rent roll. Okay. Maybe people, most people don't like to say beautiful rent rolls, but if you are like me and you love this, you know what I mean? So the unit, I mean, excuse me, the item needs to be specific about the price unit and pretty much then the tenant. Well, it's not the tenant. Let me take that back because it may change, but let me show you what we're talking about. So let's pick a tenant or let's say we get a new tenant. So we'll first create the tenant. And now I have certain ones here, like building one unit. This one was expiring 1231. Okay, unit two, Jim Bell. So we could create a new subtenant with someone who starts 1123. So let, let's do that. So we're going to say new customer, and it'll be a sub-customer of B1 unit two. I'm just going to put this here. And this is the demo file I often use for these videos. Is a sub-customer. Okay. And I like to put their expiration um, in their name. So you are you always are seeing when people are expiring, right? So we're gonna say end of 23, 24, 25. So this one would be 12, 31, 25, Jane Bond. Okay, click save. I'm trying to see this way, okay. Building one, so I should have done this a little different. Let's see, edit. It is good to make sure everything looks consistent. Lori. Okay. I need to take what I did down there and copy it up into customer display name. Now. Okay. The other thing is when someone is no longer, let's say this is paid, you could make this one inactive. Okay. So now we have two people, the same unit, but you can see that they end in different times. Okay, let's make our items with these amounts. So we're gonna go up here to the gear icon, product and service. 
Now I already have this item created. Let me back up. I've talked about it before, but in your income to make a beautiful rent roll, you need to have all of your rental income codes per unit. So see how what I did here, building one, unit two, and so forth. Building two. So we said we're in building one, unit two. So here we go. And I'm calling it this. So I'll, I don't know that to look for that. That's my chart of account. Okay, so you link the item with the price to the correct category in your chart of accounts, okay? So let's see how we do that. So this is the chart. Now we're gonna go up to products and services. And now these were generic, right? These are generic ones and they had a generic sales price. So we're gonna click new service. And then this was, what did we name her? Someone bond, bonds my name. Okay, building one, unit two, 2023 rent. Okay, and this, you would wanna put this as the um, month, like whatever the term is, rent for 2023. So I said 2023 rent is 2000. So I'm going to put that in this. Now, again, I said our chart of account is unit two, building one. Unit two, building one. Here it is. Okay. So now I've created my first one. And you can even see uh, year one. And then it can be one, one, 23, two, 12. 3123. Okay. Save and close. Do all your items all at once. Now we need to make, again, we're in the chart. We got to go back to the gear. We're going to do our second one. Okay. Service, building one, unit two, 2024, rent. I mean, you do it however you want, okay? But again, it's B1 unit two. Look here, I have my security deposits. So you gotta be careful about that. Okay, so now I've done my second item. I have one more, good. A key here too, never hit inventory. Oh, I'm in here, okay. New, don't do non-inventory bundle, just stick with service. Ignore this category. Twenty five. And again, this is where it's B one. This is why it's I get myself confused. Unit two. There you go. And see, it says rental income. Okay, so now we have our three things, right? Unit two, 23, 24. Let me just edit that so you can see your three. 2025. Okay, so you kind of want to do things in order. Make sure you have a chart of accounts for that unit or so forth, unless you're just one single tenant. Okay, so now we've created our items. 
The next thing we need to do So you're gonna memorize the transaction and automate it. Now they've just changed this. So I was doing this the other day and everything was different. So let's go see if I can show you the correct way. Okay, so here's our new person, Jane Bond. We're gonna create an invoice. Now, you might not see this because I just had, I was on with someone in their QuickBooks and they did not have make recurring at the bottom. They had it a different way. And I'm in actually, oh, one thing to specify though is that I'm probably in accountant view. I am. So if you click the gear, there's trying to merge those because I can't even use business view. So just disclaimer, I do everything in account view. But actually I was in that client's file and I made sure we were in account view and then I still couldn't do it. I had to view the new way. So they change this stuff sometimes, way too many times. Okay, so create the invoice. Now, here's the thing. I'm actually in August, so I would need to be ahead of the game in back in December for the to future out the others, but we'll pretend like all those have been made so far. And that we're gonna do September, October, November, December. So four months. So we're gonna say nine, one. We've got Jane Bond, right? And here we go. Building one, unit two, 2023 rent. And look what it did. It auto-filled the $2,000 per our scenario. Okay. All right, so now this is great. So normally what you should also do is enter their email. And you can also put other people on it and you could also blind copy yourself so that you can make sure they went out. I would recommend that. Okay. All right, so now right down here, it says make recurring. So we're gonna say automatically send the emails. Now you could send it like one day in advance, two days, which is fine. So let's say three days. And our start date is September 1st. We're gonna pretend that we've already invoiced for all the other months. And now we're going to say after three occurrences, so we have September, October, no, four, December. September, October, November, December. Four occurrences, it's gonna go out and then it's gonna stop. Okay, so we're gonna say safe. So now this will go out December 1st. I mean, September 1st. Okay, let's go back to Jane. I liked it the way I just had it, hold on. Okay, so here we are. And then we say create invoice again. But this time we're gonna do it for 112024. Oh, the other thing is you gotta, ooh, I might've screwed that up. We wanna say due on receipt. So just make sure you check that. And then building what now we're doing 2024. Uh-oh, look, my item is wrong. I must not have put the, so this is like where you're gonna find out if you screwed something up. 2024, I didn't put my price in. So 2024, I said 2060. Okay, it's good for me to mess up because then you can see what you could do. Okay, so now go back to Jane. We're gonna create the invoices for 2024. So new invoice. We're going to do on receipt 1124. Building one. Okay, so now it auto filled the rate. That's really important. So we fixed that. Then we're gonna go down to the bottom, click make recurring automatically send, let's say three days in advance. Start date 01012024, and we need 12. So we're doing one whole year. Okay, and, and we have our terms due on receipt. Okay, so we're gonna say save template. Oh, I have to change the template name. So I would put up here, 
2024. Okay. Save. Perfect. So I haven't made any of these invoices yet because we have them set for the future. So invoice again. Now we're going to do 2025. Okay. Again, do on receipt. Look, here it has a created recurring invoice right there as well. Or when I do it from the bottom. Okay. Now we got to do the 2025. Oh my Lord. Okay, we're gonna do 2025. So we need to say due on receipt. This one's 1125. Okay, it has the term of that, it has the rate. We're gonna go down here and click make recurring. So we're say three days, automatically send. Again, here you could blind copy yourself or openly copy yourself. The start date is 1125, and it will end after 12 occurrences. Okay, save. Oh, I've got to change this one too. Okay, and these will go out three days in advance. I like to get copied on e anything being sent out. Okay, so now go over to the gear icon, right under lists, it says recurring transactions. And this is where you could check what's about to happen next. So then you could go by name, we had B1. So look, here we have this one's next date is 9-1-2023. And then here we have this one starting 1-1-24. And here's your 1-1-25. And if you're worried about them, you would just click edit here. And you could see, okay, yeah, it says it's going to. So in my demo file, it's funny, I get these emails because I think I send them to myself. And I get these yeah, because I get the emails at hello. I get these and I'm like, oh, thanks, fake building. Um, so anyway, they really do work because I'm getting emails from my fake QuickBooks file just to like keep it going um, for these types of demos. All right, so if you do this, it will be helpful because you won't have to remember at the end of a month to get ready and send the invoices out. Second of all, then it's just automatic. If you set up your QuickBooks payments through here, even better, people will pay you, you know, ahead of time. And then again, I would just say the other thing, you know, inside the customer is that I really do like to put their lease end date right here so that it's not a surprise when the lease expires. And there's many landlords that forget about lease expirations. All right, I hope you found this helpful. I'm from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping, and we specialize in commercial real estate bookkeeping, as well as um, QuickBooks lessons for real estate investors. All right. Have a great night.